Spider-Man, Spider-Man, doing this reboot thing again. So yeah, I'm going to see uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, and uh, hopefully they get it right this time because we haven't we haven't really gotten the perfect Spider-Man yet. Um, Tobey Maguire was a very good Peter Parker, not a very good Spider-Man. Um, and then it kind of reversed, ironically enough, where Andrew Garfield was a very good Spider-Man, not a very good Peter Parker. This new guy they got, Tom Holland, uh, we've only seen a little bit of him from uh, the Civil War, Captain America Civil War, and he, hands down, was one of the best parts of that movie. His performance as Spider-Man was dead on. It'll be kind of interesting to see uh, see more of him and see what he can do with with the role. Um, what else can I say about this movie going in? Um, the villain, I'm kind of interested. I'm kind of both interested and not interested in the villain because the villain is the Vulture, who isn't one of my favorite Spider-Man villains, but he's played by Michael Keaton, and that right there is worth the price of an admission ticket. I really want to see Michael Keaton play a full-on bad guy, because that, 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 so, that feels like it could work. We also got the Shocker coming in on this movie, and he's one of my, he is one of my favorite Spider-Man villains. Very underrated Spider-Man villain. Um, there was a series that came back, uh, came out a while ago called The Superior Foes of Spider-Man. He was in that, and he was easily one of the best parts of that series. What else can I talk about this movie? Um, apparently the director, I haven't seen any of his work, but he said that when he was making this movie, apparently he was going in with a very John, uh, John Hughes, like a, a very breakfast club, a very, um... Uh, uh, sixteen candles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. One of a very that kind of feel, and if that's if that's the case, all for it, all for it. Um, that that makes total sense when it comes to doing a, a Spider-Man movie set in high school. Absolute, absolutely. So that's definitely the right mindset to uh, be going in when you're directing this film. Um, so yeah, that's kind of just my my thoughts going in the movie um hopefully it's good a lot of people seem to be liking it some have even said it's better than spider-man 2 which is a very bold claim um hopefully i like it as well um i'll see you guys when when i get out hey where are you going what are you hiding peter I'm just kidding, I don't care. Bye. Alright, so Spider-Man Homecoming. Um it was pretty good. Uh I wouldn't go as far. A lot of people, a lot of critics, a lot of audiences members, a lot of people are saying that this is the best Spider-Man movie. That this is um, one of some people have even gone as far as saying this is the best superhero movie, and I could I I disagree, but I, I'm not gonna say it's that good. But it was pretty good. Um, it it definitely feels like a big step in the right direction for uh, Sony and uh, the Spider-Man franchise. Let's just get into it. Get into the notes that I wrote. Uh, first note that I wrote: Tom Holland is perfect as as Peter Parker and Spider-Man. He he definitely finds the right balance between socially awkward and upstanding uh moral citizen. Um you really like this guy and um you you like watching him. You like seeing him and you you cheer him on. You definitely want to see him succeed at the things that he's trying to uh, to to do. Um the main drama in this film is Peter trying to find that balance between being both a superhero and a high school student. And that's kind of one of the best parts of Spider-Man comics. That's what makes Spider-Man relatable, is that he has a lot of the same problems that we go through. And, and he wants to be a superhero, 
But he also has calculus. He has uh, a math test, you know. He's got to get a job. He's got to support Aunt May. It's That's what makes Spider-Man a good character. And this movie did a very good job at um, showcasing that side of Spider-Man. One of the things that people really seem to like about Spider-Man is that he's kind of the the uh the per the people's hero in a sense he uh he's he's a hero for the people um he's the kind of you can't really see iron man or captain america or the incredible hulk you can't really see them going around town socializing with people um but Spider-Man is different. Spider-Man is the kind of person that, like, he'll go out and he'll give people directions. He'll stop a bully from picking on a kid. He'll, uh, uh there's a great scene in the film where a guy's like, Hey, you're Spider-Man! Do a flip! And, you know, he, he, he plays along with them. He, he, he likes to, he, li he very much is a, a, per a people person. The main kind of... Uh, moral lesson, I guess, that Peter... The moral dilemma that Peter has to go through is that... Or the main lesson that he has to learn is it very, It kind of plays into the lesson that Spider-Man's always preaching, which is with great power comes great responsibility. And um, in this film, it's kind of interesting seeing Peter Parker, Spider-Man, who has the power, but he hasn't quite figured out the responsibility yet. Um, there's a lot of scenes in this film where he, uh, his actions, even though accidental, put human lives in danger. And it's him kind of, a lot of the film is him trying to kind of make up and uh, uh, learn through his mistakes and hopefully become a better superhero, which is a lot of the, which is the character growth that he goes through. One of the things that I really liked about this film is that really has a good job it really does a good job of making peter's high school life just as important as his superhero life um you know going to the uh, the uh the decathlon and going to homecoming is just as important to peter as stopping the vulture or uh stopping a bank heist and uh, I, I like that. It definitely seems like most the last previous Spider-Man films have kind of always um, leaned a little bit too far to the crime-fighting side. And I like that this film w was a nice balance between the two. There is also a lot of really good scenes in this movie. Um, one of the, my favorite scenes is there's, uh, there's, there's a scene where Spider-Man is in the suburbs. And you think that sounds like boring. But it's one of those things that Spider-Man is a superhero that's used to swinging around on tall buildings and he he's used to that kind of environment. It's kind of interesting seeing him taken out of that environment and put in him in an environment where there are no tall buildings to swing on. Where he has to find other means of getting around. Um, and I like that. A lot of this film seems like they clearly knew what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. And they knew where, when and where to subvert it. Which leads to a lot of uh, uh, great entertain, entertaining scenes. Um, so, now that I've said a lot of the good things in this movie, there are quite a few bad things that I had with this movie. Quite a few. No, I wouldn't say bad things. I would just say quite a few problems that I had with this movie. Um, most of it comes with the villains. Once again, we have, like, four villains in this movie. And the main one is obviously Vulture, and he's the one that most of the time is spent with. But the biggest problem with this movie is that there are a lot of big villains reduced to small roles. Um, the Tinkerer in the comics is a big villain. He's easily enough that you could he could carry his own movie. But... In this movie, he's just kind of reduced to the guy, the tech guy. Or um, the Shocker. There's two Shockers in this film. And I really like the Shocker in the comics. I always thought he was kind of an underrated Spider-Man villain. But he, again, he's just kind of reduced to uh, 
he's just kind of reduced to the Vulture's henchman. It kind of feels like a lot of these villains that I feel like easily could carry their own film are just kind of tucked away in the corner. Um, and that's a shame, because it, it definitely feels like they're kind of wasting that character in a sense. The Vulture, the main villain of this film. First of all, Michael Keaton's performance, fantastic. There are some really good scenes in this film where he uh, he has to be very menacing and he sells it, 100% sells it. His motivations are very clearly uh, defined, but I don't know, there's, the, there's this scene in the beginning where uh, you see him in his normal routine and then literally like, on a flip of a dime, he's just like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna be a supervillain now. And yeah, it's, um, it felt a little weird that he was just like, oh, you're just gonna suddenly like flick, flip, flip a switch and I'm a bad guy now. And I don't know. Let's talk about some of the side characters in this film. Um, a lot of memorable side characters, but not really good side characters. Um, I liked the, uh, the, the, what's his name? I think his name is Ned. I liked him. He was cool. Uh, I liked sarcastic, the sarcastic chick, uh, Michelle, I think her name was. Liz Allen was very flat. She was basically just an object for Peter to pine over. Um, she didn't really have, feel like her own character. Uh, what other side characters are? Uh, I like Happy Hogan. I'm glad he, he's in the film. Jon Favreau, again, is doing a great job in, as that role. I like the moments when uh, Robert Downey Jr. shows up. Again, Robert Downey Jr. is, he could be in every Marvel movie and I would be, I would, I would applaud him. He just, he just does the Tony Stark role so well. Um, one of the other things that personally wasn't a problem for me but I can definitely see a lot of people having problems with it, is that this movie changes a lot from the comics. Um, there's a lot of characters that have changed uh, race for the sake of diversity. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, changes to Spider-Man and his suit. There's a lot of changes to uh, the continuity. Um, I know a lot of people didn't like Sexy Aunt May from Civil War. If you didn't like that, there's tons of it in here. Um, but me personally, I had no problem with, with any of those changes. Because the problem is, we've had two Spider-Man movie series up to this point. Pretty much everything that has been done in the comics has been done in the movies as well. So it's definitely time, I guess it was kind of necessary for that change to to, to come about. I, I guess it was, I guess it was definitely, I guess it was definitely necessary for, um, for them to change things around a little bit in order to stay relevant and to, and, and to stay fresh. Um, so again, I didn't have a personal problem with it, but I know a lot of comic book purists will probably have a problem with that. Um, me personally, couldn't couldn't be bothered with such minute details. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts of Spider-Man Homecoming. Uh, would I go see it? Absolutely, go see it in theaters. It's definitely worth the watch. It's a, it's a good movie. Um, is it the best Spider-Man movie? Yes, absolutely. Uh, this is the Spider-Man we have, uh, as comic book fans, have been waiting for a long, long time. Um, he, he, it, Tom Holland is the perfect Spider-Man, and it's a real treat watching him, uh, watching finally a definitive Spider-Man. So yes, this is the best Spider-Man movie. Is this the best movie in the Spider-Man franchise? No. Spider-Man 2 was definitely a more well-made film. This film is the better Spider-Man film, so it's really a give and take. Um, so, um, yeah, that's my thoughts of Spider-Man Homecoming. Just kind of my first initial thoughts. Um, I'm going to have to definitely see it a few more times in order to, to get a, a stronger opinion on this one. Um... But, uh, I, I liked it. I liked the film. I liked it a lot. Um, I would definitely go see it. And, 
thank you guys for watching. If you saw the film and want to share your thoughts, comment below. If you, you like this video, hit that like button. And uh, if you want to see more videos published every Friday, hit that subscribe button. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao.